Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. How to Be a Great Boss by Gina Wickman. Gina Wickman and Renee Bohr offer advice to managers in their book How to Be a Great Boss on how to improve their leadership skills and coax the best performance from their employees. Gina Wickman is one of the co-founders of EOS Worldwide, while Renee Bohr has more than 40 years of experience in the restaurant sector leading teams. Both men have been instrumental in the development of EOS. Together, they teach you how to be an excellent manager and give you skills that you can actually use to make your organization better. This book is a part of a bigger series about the entrepreneurial operating system, also known as EOS. EOS is a complete toolkit designed to assist company leadership teams in becoming more effective, gaining traction, and expanding their businesses. EOS is comprised of a number of essential parts, the most important of which are the vision, people, data, issues, process, and traction. Check out the book Traction, get a grip on your business if you want to gain a better understanding of EOS. Chapter 1 being a great boss. According to surveys conducted by Gallup since the year 2000, just 31% of full-time employees in the United States are involved in their jobs, while 17.5% of American workers are actively disengaged, and 51% of workers are not engaged. The first group most likely has a wonderful supervisor since its members consistently arrive early, are productive, stay late, find solutions to problems, and feel energized. The latter two categories, on the other hand, have supervisors that are either incompetent or who don't give a damn about their staff. If you fall into the second category of managers, it is unlikely that you will accomplish what you set out to do. On the other hand, you are required to join the first category. Because your employees are important to you and are the source of your competitive edge, you need to make the decision to be an excellent manager. Do you think you have what it takes to succeed in Chapter 2? You should begin by determining through the use of the GWC tool, whether you are up to the task of becoming a great boss, which is a difficult endeavor. GWC is an abbreviation that stands for the three questions that you need to ask yourself, do you get it? Do you want it? Do you have the capacity to do it? Get it, you not only have the inherent aptitude, but you also have a profound understanding of the supervisory role. Your peers and subordinates do not even bother to dispute your comprehension because it is so excellent. You want it? You are driven by a genuine interest in becoming a fantastic manager. You are not misled or tempted into taking on the position, and you possess the willpower necessary to conquer the challenges that stand in your way. The capacity to carry it out, you have the following capacities to complete the work, the emotional capacity to empathize and connect with other people, the intellectual capacity to think critically and find solutions to problems, the physical capacity to have the energy to complete the work and the self-discipline capacity to structure time and prioritize tasks. The first two are either items you have or things you don't have. These are get it and want it. You will be able to do it if you have put in the necessary time and effort to become successful in the role. Chapter 3, Delegate and Elevate. You will be able to better utilize both your time and your abilities with the assistance of the EOS tool known as Delegate and Elevate. It will clarify and identify the tasks that you need to delegate to others in order to free up your time capacity and become an excellent manager. The process of assigning responsibilities and promoting employees consists of the following five steps. Detail all of the business activities that you complete during the day, the week, and the month by writing them down. Examine the list of activities provided by EOS to determine whether or not you skipped any necessary steps. Consider each job individually and decide whether you enjoy doing it and are good at it whether you like doing it and are good at it, whether you don't like doing it and are good at doing it, and whether you don't like not doing it and are not good at it. You have the potential to become an excellent manager if the majority of your responsibilities fall into the first two categories. If you are unable to complete the duties that have been listed for the business, you have an issue with your time capacity and need to delegate work. This activity will reveal how proficient you are in each of your activities as well as how much you like doing them. The fourth lesson is to surround yourself with wonderful people. The best leaders are able to accurately assess their staff members and consistently surround themselves with talented individuals. To begin, in order to construct a cohesive and effective team, exceptional people need to be defined. Fantastic individuals, or, more specifically, the right people in the right seats. Right people are those who are compatible with your company's culture and who share your fundamental beliefs. Right seats refers to a position that gives an individual the opportunity to work within the realm of their best expertise and area of greatest interest. The right employees have an understanding of the goal, are a good fit within the culture of the company, and are willing to work to improve the organization. 
your organization needs to come to a decision regarding its fundamental principles, which should reflect the qualities and traits of your employees. The correct seat is a position of subordination that answers to you in your capacity as the boss. You need to establish five primary responsibilities in order for the appropriate individual to understand what is expected of them. After the seats have been defined, utilize the GWC tool to determine whether or not a candidate is a good fit for each seat based on whether or not they get it, want it, and have the capacity to do it. Leadership, management, and accountability are the topics that will be covered in Chapter 5. LMA. The writers base their advice on the following guiding principle for how to be an effective manager. A fantastic manager is one who can create an atmosphere at work in which employees are fully engaged and highly accountable. The four authenticities. It is necessary to acknowledge the following four facts in order to establish a culture of accountability. It's not always complicated. It is imperative that you adhere rigidly to the following five leadership concepts as well as the following five management principles. Stay true to your personal taste. If you want other people to have faith in you and confidence in you, you have to be genuine and honest about who you are. Take a sincere interest in the people you lead. When people believe that you care about their professional development and welfare, they are more likely to work for you. You have to have the desire to be great. You have to have the desire to be a great boss, and you may achieve this goal by consistently investing in your own personal development. L plus M equals A, stands for leadership plus management equals accountability. Leadership and effective management are the root causes of accountability. Leadership entails working on the company, pointing employees in the right direction, making room for others, and pausing to reflect on what you're doing. Forming a vision management, working in the firm, establishing unmistakable goals, maintaining open and effective lines of communication, and ensuring that things are completed increasing ground or momentum. The five leadership practices, which take center stage in Chapter 6. To develop into a fantastic leader, you need to have an understanding of the five leadership practices, which are as follows. Provide a direction that is clear. Give the organization a clear direction by articulating an inspiring vision that everyone can rally around and work toward achieving. This will encourage everyone to take action and get the organization where it needs to be. Give them the tools they need to succeed. You must provide the resources and assistance that your employees require in order to be successful. These resources include training, technology, people, time, and attention. Relax your grip on the vine. Your employees should be allowed to go to work. Many leaders struggle to let go of their responsibilities, which causes them to get in their team's way. You need to have faith that the work will be completed successfully by the folks you've hired. Consider the greater good when acting. You should prioritize the demands of the firm and the individuals working for you over your own needs. Your choices and actions ought to be in accordance with the vision that you have communicated to your people. Take freakouts when you need to. Take breaks so that you may keep your energy up and maintain your composure for the sake of your people. Clarity breaks are predetermined periods of time spent away from the office where the purpose is to reflect and work on one's company. Read the book summary of John Maxwell's The Five Levels of Leadership for additional information on the topic of leadership. The five management practices are discussed in Chapter 7. To develop into a fantastic manager, you need to have an understanding of the five management practices, which are as follows. Be sure to maintain realistic expectations. Your subordinates' five major positional tasks and responsibilities, the basic values of the organization, their rocks, or significant quarterly priorities, and their key performance indicators should all be clearly communicated to them, as should your expectations for these areas. Communicate well. Communicate with your subordinates and avoid making assumptions by sharing both good and negative feelings, asking questions rather than making comments, restating what you heard to your direct report, and reiterating what you heard to other subordinates. Ask one of your subordinates to repeat what they have heard back to you. Keep a meeting pulse TM going at all times. Maintain weekly meetings with your staff, each one lasting between 60 and 90 minutes in length. These gatherings should occur at the same time and day each week. Adhere to a consistent agenda, and begin and end at the scheduled times. You need to go over the priorities, do an analysis of the measurables, and fix the problems. Hold conversations every three months. Face-to-face -face meetings with each individual member of your team should be held in order to discuss the team's priorities, roles, and fundamental values. In order to properly manage and build each of your relationships, these unofficial encounters should take place away from the main location. Reward and acknowledge their efforts. 
recognize and value the contributions of your team members by providing feedback, either good or negative, within 24 hours, praising them in public and offering constructive criticism in private, and by acting in the role of a leader rather than a friend to them. The Policy of the Three Strikes Rule This EOS tool assists you in dealing with subordinates in situations in which they fail to achieve your expectations on a consistent basis. Have a conversation with the person, figure out what the issues are, and come to an understanding with them about how to fix them. Get get in touch with the person and discuss the individual's performance over the past 30 days in another meeting. If the rule is adequately enforced, most people will quit by the time the third meeting comes around. If that is not the case, you need to fire them. Chapter 8 The conversation that occurs four times a year. The quarterly conversation is a discussion that takes place face to face once every three months with each member of your team to talk about the team's basic beliefs, concerns, roles, and priorities. The casual meeting should be held somewhere other than the workplace so that the employer may more effectively manage and expand each of their connections. Have a conversation about the following two questions What's going right? Request that the employee disclose their accomplishments work activities, or the procedures they followed. Ask them what they think or how they feel things are going well within the organization or with your relationship. After they have finished, you should then elaborate on your own comments and acknowledge them for their accomplishments, deeds, and continued development. What is not going right? Make room for both you and your employee to brainstorm potential issues and their underlying causes. At first, you should refrain from interrupting what your subordinate has to say and just listen to what they have to say. After that, you are obligated to offer your feedback on the aspects that are failing. Determine a course of action to address the problems that are solvable, and then address the problems. The annual review is a meeting that is held at no cost between you and your direct report in which you discuss maintaining clear expectations, recognizing important accomplishments, acknowledging areas for improvement, and developing a plan of action for the upcoming year. The four people problems, which bring us to chapter 9. As a boss, you will most likely have to deal with the following four types of people problems. Right person, right seat, although it might not appear to be a problem at first glance, you need to ensure that you provide these individuals sufficient time and attention. Due to the fact that these folks will both contribute to your success and cause you difficulties, it is imperative that you pay them appropriately and acknowledge their accomplishments. Right person, Wrong seat describes a situation in which you have the right person but have placed them in the wrong seat through acquisition, hiring, or promotion. This individual shares your fundamental beliefs and contributes to your culture, yet they fail to generate outcomes or respond to feedback. To leave with dignity, you must either find the right seat for you or quit their employment. Wrong person, right seat, it appears that you have the wrong person working for your company, and they are wrongly producing outcomes while also undermining you your fundamental values, and your team. This kind of dismissal may be harsh, but it will have an effect on your company's culture, and your staff will be grateful to you for it. Wrong person, wrong seat, this problem is the most obvious and should be noticeable within the first quarter of them joining your team. It is important to pay attention to this issue. If you choose to disregard getting rid of them, you will have to cope with the dire consequences, and people may lose respect for you as a result. The final word on people which is chapter 10. Excellent managers are able to coax the best performance out of their employees. They consistently hold their employees to greater standards of accountability and raise the bar for what is expected of them, all with the goal of turning consistent achievement into a habit. The following steps if you want to know how to be a great boss, as a manager, Gina Wickman and Renee Bohr will assist you in developing personally and helping your team members reach their full potential. (music) 